For the past three decades, Nissan has sold its Micra in bucket loads, partly because it's cheap to buy, also because it's easy to drive, which makes it appealing to first-time car owners and those downsizing from larger cars. This latest version is a little bit different though. It promises a sportier drive and its posher interior could make it rise head and shoulders above its competition. So, is the new Micra now a better choice than rivals such as the Seat Ibiza, Ford Fiesta and Volkswagen Polo? Let's find out. But before that, don't forget we can help save you money on your next new car. Go to whatcar.com and head to our new car deal section where we can help save you thousands. Engine choice is simple. There's a slow, one-litre, non-turbocharged petrol engine which has 70 brake horsepower and a puny 71 pound foot of torque, which means it gets to 60 in a truly glacial 16.9 seconds. It has just enough poke to be able to cope around town, but as soon as you get to a B road, it really starts to struggle. And at over 3000 RPM, it also starts to get a little bit noisy. We recommend going for the 0.9 litre turbocharged petrol engine, which is the one we're testing today, and is definitely worth the premium over the entry level engine. It has the right blend of performance to use around town and also on the open road. Yes, it does get a little bit vocal when you really push it through the rev range, but it has enough low end grunt that you seldom need to do that. And if you're doing enough miles to warrant buying a diesel, there's the 1.5 litre diesel engine, which has a good delivery of power across the rev range and is one of the smoothest in its class. Sadly, the five-speed manual gearbox isn't impressive. The action is a little bit vague. What is impressive, however, is the clutch is light and positive and the brakes are progressive, which makes the Micra a breeze for driving around town. In terms of how the car rides, the micro suspension is fairly stiffly sprung, which on the plus side means it stops the car bouncing around over undulating roads, but on the downside it means the Ibiza, Fiesta and Polo are all smoother riding. This is particularly noticeable around town where the micro fidgets and has a tendency to crash over the kind of sharp potholes that those three rivals would cross without much bother. At least the micro's jitteriness smooths out when the speed increases, which makes the Micra a very good motorway cruiser. The Micra's light steering lends itself perfectly to city driving. Trouble is, when you get out onto the open road, it doesn't weight up nicely like a Fiesta or Ibiza. It does, however, have plenty of grip around the corners and very minimal body lean, but the back end can feel a little bit skittish in wet conditions. Overall, it is reasonably sporty, but not quite as sporty as we were expecting. It's a small car, but most people should be able to find a driving position that works thanks to the adjustment in the seat and also the steering wheel adjusts for reach and rake, which is great. In terms of visibility, it is excellent out of the front, apart from the sloping A pillars can cause a slight obstruction at junctions. It's out the back that it becomes a bit of a problem because the pillars are very thick and the screen is very shallow. However, you can spec reversing camera and parking sensors on the mid-range center model and they come as standard on the top of the range Tecna that we're testing today. In terms of interior quality and the dashboard, it's logically laid out and the buttons and switches are very clearly labelled. One criticism I do have, unless you choose one of the priciest models on offer, the steering wheel is plastic and the gear lever rubber and these two main points of contact feeling quite cheap is not ideal. Overall, the fit and finish is not quite as pristine as say a Volkswagen Polo. As centre models and above come with this 7-inch touchscreen, crisp, easy-to-use screen. It does, however, have quite small icons which are a little bit tricky to hit accurately on the move. You do have to buy an optional connect package or go for the pricey end connector or Tecna trims if you want a built-in sat-nav and DAB radio. But Apple CarPlay and MirrorLink are standard on mid-spec as centre models, allowing you to use your phone's apps via the screen. The optional Bose stereo has speakers on the side of the driver's headrest and creates very effective surround sound. Up front, the Nissan Micra is one of the roomiest cars in its class. It's also fairly practical with two cup holders there, a decent sized door bin and a large glove box. 
If you regularly carry more than one adult passenger, it's probably worth crossing the Nissan Micra off your list. Because in the back, there's not exactly loads of leg room, and even five foot four and a half me is very aware of how close the roof is. So overall, being in the back of the Micra is not the most comfortable place to be. As for the boot, it's a decent size and is usefully wide. So you can fit a buggy in there or the weekly shop, but you can still fit more in an Ibiza, Polo or Fabia. If luggage space is a real priority to you, you'd probably be better off with a Honda Jazz or a small estate car such as the Fabia estate. Although there are cheap versions of the Nissan Micra, the versions that you really want with the best spec and trim are not noticeably cheaper than our favourite versions of the Fabia, Ibiza and Polo. And those cars have got more favourable finance deals. Plus, it's set to lose its value quicker than the best cars in its class and is set to have more expensive service costs. That said, our favourite engine, the 0.9 litre, returns 45 miles per gallon in our real world fuel economy test. As for equipment, the entry-level Vizia does not come with air conditioning, so you need to upgrade to the Vizia Plus to get that. Our favourite though is the mid-range Ascenta because it comes with a touchscreen infotainment system, alloy wheels and cruise control. Above that you have N-Connector and Technomicras which are both far too expensive to recommend, even though they come with a long list of equipment including sat-nav, folding mirrors and rear privacy glass. All Micras come with a very impressive list of standard safety equipment, which includes front side and window airbags, a lane departure warning system and an automatic emergency braking system that can stop you from running into pedestrians or another car. The UK spec Micra gets the maximum 5 star safety rating from Euro NCAP, which matches rivals such as the Seat Ibiza and Volkswagen Polo. Unfortunately for the Micra though, even though it comes with a long list of standard safety equipment, overall it is a little underwhelming and doesn't perform as well as the best cars in its class. For plenty more on the Nissan Micra, including our full online review, head to whatcar.com. You'll also find reviews of its key rivals and if you're thinking about buying one, head to the new car buying section where we can help save you thousands. But before you do that, hit subscribe and never miss another video.